Hello everyone, I'm the Walrus Clown and welcome to Walrus Reviews. And you might want to get the booze again because I found what is officially the worst of the Hanna Bear superheroes of the 60s and mid 70s. And in fact, this show is so boring that the story revolving around it is more interesting than the show itself. Young Samson, everyone. Otter, roll the intro, please. Otter, why haven't you started the intro? Jeez, I have to do everything myself. Have to have a talk with him about this next time I see him. To start, let's get the technicals out of the way. Young Samson, which was originally called Samson and Goliath, but had his name changed to avoid confusion with the claymation Christian cartoon, Davy and Goliath, was a series produced by Hanna-Barbera for NBC instead of CBS like the other Hanna Hero 60 cartoons, and originally aired on September 9th, 1976. As stated before, the story around Young Samson is far more interesting than the show itself, so I'm doing that first. Of the 20 episodes, you will only ever find 19 of them because back then everything was filmed on very flammable film rolls and I'm going to assume my audience is smart enough to figure out what happened from there. Anywho on to the show itself. Young Samson is about the adventures of Samson and his dog Goliath as they go around the world on a moped, meeting old friends and stumbling onto giant kaiju monsters or the villain of the week's plot, which almost always involves creating a kaiju monster, and using his magic bands to turn into a hero with superhuman strength roughly on par with Samson from the Bible, and his dog into a superpowered lion with a sonic roar and laser beam eyes, because transforming your pet into something that's going to result in it getting shot between the eyes when it tries to run up and say hi to someone is totally not going to result in your pet being shot at all. That's some Simpsons patented SMRT right there. Anywho, as I've stated multiple times on this show, the parents' rights groups had way too much power during the 70s to the point where they were flat out attacking individuality and it was like that clear until 1983 when Ronald Reagan of all people saved the American animation industry by tearing down the walls between children's programming and toy marketing. What most people don't get is that it wasn't that bad at the start of the decade and the moral guardians took more power as the 60s and 70s went on. Young Samson came out right around the time that the influence of these groups could be tangibly felt on the cartoons coming out. And that's where a lot of young Samson's problems come from. And in fact, if not for these problems, the show would not be worth talking about save for reiterating the fact that yes, there was a formula, and yes, like Blip the Monkey and Avenger the Eagle before him, Goliath the Lion was pretty much a deus ex machina. You never see Samson actually hurt another human being, irregardless of how heinous what they did was. This is also the reason I assume there were so many kaiju monsters. Samson was actually allowed to punch or throw them, but never actually hurt them, mind you. It almost always ends with them being put back into hibernation they awoke from, or being crushed by rocks off screen if they had to do it. It's only slightly better than the Space Stars programming block. If I had to miss my guess, the fact that they fooled the censors by having the hero be powered by the biblical hero Samson was the main reason the show was allowed to be as action-heavy as it was. Which leads us to the elephant in the room of the Hanna-Barbera 60s action shows that I've avoided talking about until now. Which is best summed up by this overused internet meme joke. Almost all of the cartoons from this era, irregardless of who made them, had some kind of 60s casual racist element to them. If you recall the racist crows from the animated Dumbo from the 40s, then you have a general idea of what you're in for if you decide to go back and watch cartoons from this era. All non-Caucasian races have some kind of negative stereotype to their depiction, especially when depicting native cultures. Every time we are in some sort of jungle ruins or on an island, and I mean every damn time we see a native culture all we see are scientifically inept tribesmen who are basically witch doctors who commit human sacrifices especially when dealing with pacific islanders aside from the obvious carbon monoxide poisoning i'll let chibi thulu from the long-haired creepy guys channel handle the rest there are no temples inside active volcanoes or dormant ones yes at one time hawaiian natives practiced ritual sacrifice but no one was thrown into a volcano. No temples were built in volcanoes. B. 
Because they are volcanoes! Depicting people like this was not okay then, and it's not okay now. These were products of their time, so I won't be going off on a justifiably angry tirade like I would if this had been done in our current decade, but I will say that this aspect of media from back then has aged horribly and is very problematic. Like with episode 13, Lost City of the Dragon Men. We start with Samson just randomly going through a South American jungle, where he hears a report on his scooter's radio that his old friend, Professor of the Week, has gone missing in an old Mayan ruin. In an attempt to find him, he stumbles upon dragon-hooded men riding bat monsters. After transforming and dealing with them, a hentai rape monster shows up out of nowhere and tries to drown him. After Goliath saves him, he finds the Professor, where the head priest guy from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom only wearing a dragon hood is getting ready to crush him, and tells him to back off. After some back and forth, Dragon Priest unleashes a fire-breathing dragon lizard. The duo splits up and Samson frees the Professor while Goliath has the lamest Pokemon battle ever made, and in a rare instance of death in this series, Goliath throws the dragon into a pit of lava that's there for some reason. Presumably they got this past the moral guardians because it was a dragon that got killed. And dragons are considered satanic in Abrahamic religions. But the dragon caused the lava to ignite and they can't get out and the dragon priest and his minions have one last lame fight scene with Samson. They get out and the episode ends. My god that was a slog to get through. If not for the casual xenophobic racism I would have felt nothing but boredom. Another huge problem with many of the Hannah heroes of this era, more noticeable here than with the others because of how repetitive the action and stories are with young Samson, is that no one has a proper origin story. No one. I only knew that Birdman was granted his powers from the Sun God Ra because the wiki said so. All three origins of Space Ghost are add-ons from his various comic book adaptations from decades later, Shazam's backstory about how he got trapped in the rings or the identity of his real master are never gone into, how Xandor tamed his group of space monsters is never told, and if you couldn't tell, no. Samson does not get an origin story. We never find out how his magic bands turn him into a muscle man or Goliath into a lion, nor ever find out where they came from. My tour is the only one with a concrete origin story for his powers. Tor helped an elder witch doctor who rewarded his heroism by enchanting his club so that he could turn into my Tor. And we know this because it's explained in the exposition dump we get in lieu of an actual theme song. In closing, while not as good as most of the other action shows Hanna-Barbera was putting out, it still had decent kaiju fight scenes and Goliath was a decent animal sidekick. So there are redeeming qualities to it and it still has more logic behind it than anything that Moby Dick did. Although that's not saying much and nothing Hanna-Barbera produced during the 70s could ever, ever come close to being as bland and boring as the Space Star's programming block. But that isn't hard to do, so take that with a grain of salt. Hmm, what's this? I, the great Breedlock, have kidnapped your friends Otter and the Zigwolf, and your missing side character Zipotamus has been held against his will by me for months now. If you want them back, you will have to complete my three review challenges and beat me at the combat. Signed, the great and powerful villainous Gridlock. <laughs> Oh great, a villain plot. Knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Every internet reviewer goes through this eventually. Well, better get the flamethrower. Anywho, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell. See you next time. The Colossus is moving at last. The media. Hello, this is the Walrus Clown here. I'm just saying that it might take me a while to get ready to go fight this jackass, but in the meantime, if you would do me a personal favor and like, comment, subscribe, and maybe watch another video or check out the Hanna-Barbera playlist, that would be great. See you next time. Bye.